You have to say, where's Lily? Do I? Yeah. Okay, where's Lily? Hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to Channel 37. We have a very special episode for you today. One of our long-term goals when we started this channel was to build three toms MS-22 filter. And today we're ready to do that. A special announcement first. We're giving away an MS-22 parcel kit sponsored by 3Tom. So if you want to participate in the giveaway, make sure to comment below this video or in the chat if you're joining us for the premiere. More about that later. But first, let us tell you about this wonderful module. The MS-22 is based on the Korg MS-20. It's a dual voltage controlled high pass, low pass filter. It has a very unique modulation matrix, which allows for complex internal patching. People love the original MS-20 filter for its characterful sound. There have been so many replicas over the years. And before we ordered the MS-22, we played around with a Behringer K2, which is cool because it has the first generation MS-20 filter. But it's a very big standalone unit and it doesn't track volt per octave, so we got rid of it again. With this tiny form factor, 4 HP filter by 3 tom, we hope to get that same colorful sound into our system at a fraction of the rack real estate. It's quite mind-boggling just how much functionality 3 tom managed to pack inside just 4 HP. This is because behind the front panel, there is a four PCB sandwich. I like to think that Tom, when designing this module, made sure to add one PCB for each of his engineering degrees. <laughs> Since announcing in our first video that the MS-22 was one of our long-term goals, Tom has become a sort of a modular sensei to us and has really helped us out along the way and even sent us the occasional care package. Tom has decided to give away a partial MS-22 kit to one of our subscribers. Here's how it works. You can comment below or in the live chat of our premiere. If you'd like more information, check the description box below. What we ordered from 3Tom is a partial DIY kit. When our package arrived, we were struck by the amount of personal detail. Let me show you. Our name is on the lid, as well as on the bag and the PCB. I really appreciate the extra quirky and interesting design elements. This is the PCB, and this is where it gets scary. These are the daunting 0603 surface mount pads. These are the components that came with the kit. We have potentiometer switches, and these are the machined solid aluminum knobs. We uh, did the teeth test on these ones and they check out. Finally, this is the panel. Again, it has a lot of really unique design elements like Tom's glasses, and these little arrows showing us how everything is routed and of course a lightning bolt so you know it goes up to 11. We've been putting off building this device because of all the tiny SMD parts but we have a little bit of practice now and I think we're ready. Within the Eurorack community it seems like a lot of people are using hot air stations to assemble their SMD projects but there are other ways out there and we found this interesting YouTube comparison of different methods for preparing surface mount PCBs. Surprisingly, the method that seems to provide the most professional, consistent results was baking the PCB in a skillet on a bed of fine sand. So, we went to the hardware store to pick up some fine sand. You can use silver sand for this. When I went there though, they were all sold out and I thought we would have to put off this video for a couple more weeks. But, on the way back home, I came across some roadworks and I literally scooped up several hands full of sand into my shopping bag. Now this is not the finest quality, but what I did is I sieved, sieved? Mm -hmm. sieved. <laughs> I sieved the sand, then I washed the sand, then I boiled it until it was dry, and I used that for my PCB bakes. Now to prepare for this special PCB bake, what have we been doing? We recently had a bake off with our friend Sander. We spent hours hunched over the PCBs trying to figure out how to work with solder paste for the first time, then figured out how to place the parts correctly. Now this was a lot of trial and error as it was really difficult figuring out exactly how much solder paste that we should use. Just a small disclaimer, by using the sand method we're going to deviate slightly from the official DIY instructions by 3 tom. But if this works out, we hope to show you a new way of preparing this PCB that might really lower the threshold to building it for a lot of you at home. And if we fail, well, you can learn from our mistakes. We can't wait to populate the board and cook up an MS-22. 
So join us in the kitchen for the full build video. This is a long build video, so feel free to skip ahead if you're not building it right now. First, we're removing the PCBs from the frame. We're a little paranoid about the fiberglass dust, so we decided to rig the vacuum cleaner next to it, as well as tape the sides to catch any extras. We're using a nail file to deburr the sides. That's all the PCBs done. Now we're preparing the solder paste. Now we're applying solder paste to all the pads. Note that this doesn't need to be accurate, but it does need to use as little paste as possible. We used even a little too much here. Put a small dot on each of the pads and a thin line on all of the IC headers. Note that some of the pads need to be open, but we ignored that and just applied paste to all of the pads. Now we're removing some of the paste from the open pads. Now we're placing two 51K resistors, two 100K resistors, two 200K resistors, 32 100K resistors. Six fifty one ohm resistors, Resistors. For the thirteen zero ohm resistors, we use the legs of some LEDs as jumpers. Note that these are square so it keeps them in place. Now, 11 1K resistors. Six sixty two K resistors. Four one 
1.5K resistors. Four 36K resistors. Four 560 ohm resistors. Three 68K resistors. The video cut out on the two 39K resistors, so check the build guide. Now we're placing two 22K resistors. Now, two 43K resistors. Two 2.2K resistors. Two 470K resistors. Two 3.9K resistors. Two 4.7K resistors. Two 100 ohm resistors. A 300K resistor. And a 500K resistor. Now for the capacitors. 34 100 NF capacitors. Capacitors. Six one and F capacitors. PF capacitors and four 10 UF capacitors. Now for the transistors and diodes, eight MMBT3906 transistors. Seven diodes, nine TL zero seven four op amps. These are the fine pitched TSOP ICs. Four LM one three seven zero zero op amps. Two. B50K trimmer pods, two B5K trimmer pods, and that's it. Now we're sanding the pan, getting ready to cook up something good. Trying to place the sand as evenly as possible. The aluminum foil keeps the PCB clean of any sand. We're placing board A now. Note that we're placing each board individually for the cooking. We're roughly trying to follow a generic reflow profile for the solder paste. We're preheating the board for about two minutes and then ramping up the temperature for about another minute and a half. Oh, the temperature sensor isn't extremely accurate, so we're doing most of this by feel. There goes board B following the same process. We're just now adjusting to make sure all of the components are straight. Board C. And board D. That's all of our PCBs reflowed. Now we're checking it under a microscope to see how everything worked out. 
Note that most of the passive components look really neat. But the TSOP ICs have some terrible solder bridges. We tried to remove the bridges with flux and a soldering iron, but this proved really difficult. So in the end, we recruited help from one of our friends to help remove the solder bridges. We're now moving on to the through-hole component. Place the 20-pin male and female headers. Now two 10-pin female headers. Solder the corner pins first while holding the board down on the bench. Then solder all the other pins. Repeat this process for all the headers you just placed. Now place the small 10-pin male header on the bottom of board B. After that, place the 10-pin Eurorack power header on the bottom of the same board. Now solder the small 10-pin male header on the bottom of board C. To make your PCB sandwich, solder the screws in place under the potentiometers. We're using solder paste, but make sure none of it goes through the hole as it might block the screw. Now place the four jacks, then the six potentiometers. Note that the fourth one down is a logarithmic pot. Then place the switches, put washers on the pots, then put the panel in place. Add a few nuts to keep it there. Now solder all of the interface hardware into place. Place a nut on the bottom of the screws. Now take out the LEDs. Put them through their holes on board B. Note that the long leg goes through the square pad and the flat side of the LED aligns with the illustration. Add two spacers on top of the nuts. Now wiggle the LEDs into place between the boards, making sure they're flush with the front panel. Then solder into place. Now it's time to assemble your PCB sandwich. Before you do, wash each PCB in IPA alcohol. The order is the same each time. After each board, add a nut and a spacer. I'm tightening the nuts with tweezers, but make sure not to scratch the PCB. Finish it off with just a nut. Then place the washers on the pots. Put the front panel in place. Then put the nuts on the jacks and pots.
Finally, place all the knobs. Turn the pots counterclockwise and align the knobs. Don't push them all the way down until they are all aligned. When they are, push them all down. That's your MS-22 fully assembled. We have a nice serving suggestion for your freshly baked MS-22. We're done with the build and now it's time to calibrate the unit. In the manual it is recommended to use a noise source in your DAW, but I like to use the Disting algorithm H7 is a noise source. We use red cables for the audio and in this case the noise source is plugged straight into the input of the MS-22 and the output of the MS-22 is plugged straight into this Focusrite sound card. Others have recorded videos about how to calibrate the MS-22. We especially recommend Synth DIY Guys video, but we still found it a little difficult. So in this video, we're gonna focus on a few of the hurdles and hopefully your calibration process will be easy breezy. The tricky thing about the calibration is that it wasn't exactly clear what we were calibrating and how. So let me try to explain it to you. This is the audible frequency spectrum, starting from 20 Hertz, to about 20 kilohertz. What we want is both cutoff knobs on the MS-22 to range from a maximum on that frequency spectrum all the way down to a minimum on that frequency spectrum. To do this, we have to calibrate the unit. For the low pass filter and the high pass filter, we have these two trim pots each. The left trim pot controls the gain and the gain is basically how wide of a spectrum the cutoff knob will cover. And there's an offset knob, and the offset knob controls the center of that range. I'm gonna use this tape measure to illustrate. Imagine I've just built this unit, and when I plug it in, I notice that the filter is active along a range from a little bit above 20 kilohertz to about 200 kilohertz. That's not exactly what I want. So I'm gonna turn the offset of the low pass filter counterclockwise, which is gonna move the center of the active range of the knob more towards the middle of the audible frequency range. And then I'm gonna also increase the gain by turning it clockwise, which will ensure that I cover a broader spectrum. And I can do exactly the same for the high pass filter. I'm working in Cubase. I'm using the M Analyzer Spectrum Analyzer plugin, as recommended by 3Tom, and we're trying to make the output of the MS-22 look like these four examples in the build guide. And for the first one, we're gonna open up the low pass cutoff all the way and close the high pass filter all the way. And the resonance is just a little bit before self oscillation. So what we see here is a mostly linear slope with a slight increase towards the higher frequencies. Now for the second diagram, we're gonna reduce the low pass cutoff to its minimal point, and we should see this slight mound piled up on the left side of the spectrum. Now for the third diagram, we're going to increase both the high pass and the low pass cutoff but make sure that the high pass cutoff is slightly below the low pass cutoff. And we get these dual peaks, just like these beautiful mountains in the Czech Republic. And for the final diagram, we want both the high pass and low pass cutoff at maximum. And you get this slope. The final step in the calibration procedure is to assume this position. Now let's review it. We've been soldering so much, we thought we'd take a little break and come to this beautiful idyllic spot to give our review of the MS-22. It's been a pleasurable but really challenging experience. Um, I think the most difficult part is that we had some solder bridges on the really fine pitch ICs and even following proper technique, um, we were not able to clear them up. Thankfully, our friend Stein from This Is Not Rocket Science took a break from his work on the Phoenix 4 synthesizer to help us revamp the unit. 
And after that, it turned out that the rest of the soldering was pretty good and we had a working unit. The baking method worked great for most components, except for the really fine ICs. Someone just fell in the water. <laughs> we found that the pan baking method worked really well for the passive components, but for the really fine pitched ICs, uh, it was pretty much impossible to do without having solder bridges on the little legs. So next time we're going to try soldering those by hand after we bake the rest of the components. Given that it was a little challenging to build the MS-22 from scratch, will we do it again? Probably yeah, yes. of course. It was real fun. Yeah, now that we know certain components should be avoided, I think we feel pretty excited about trying it again. And it's worth yeah. it for this kick-ass filter. It's, it's just a really fun project, even if it's pretty challenging. And what's really great about 3Tom is that he's building this whole community around the MS-22. There's a Facebook group where you can find ample support uh, and find like-minded people in your area. And this is a really just great social aspect of the, of the build. So we would actually recommend that you try to build it from scratch. If you have any struggles, as we did, uh, it's pretty likely that you'll be able to find someone in your area who can help you out and you might make a new friend in the process. <laughs> Let's review the unit ballroom style. Let's start with the face category. What do you think? I think it's really beautiful. It's got this really interesting quirky design, but it's not overstated. So it is both chic and whimsical. Um, I don't know, it's one of my favorite looking modules. I'm gonna give it a nine and a half. Oh yeah, I agree. 10 for me, actually. <laughs> Ten Tens all around. Yeah. Tens across the board. <laughs> okay. okay, so how about the Crave category? Do we want it? Um, I think we want it like to the max. It's extremely small, 4 HP, so it fits very conveniently into your rack, and it's just super, super sick. It's got everything you need. The possibilities are uh, too great to count. Yeah, we're not the only ones who are craving this module. The waiting lists are piling up. And if you want to get your hands on these modules, building one from scratch with a yellow PCB might be the only way to get your hands on one. Okay, let's talk about the groove category. I think that the original MS-20 filter has really proven its worth. And this implementation is just freaky enough to add some flavor, bring the sound into a new millennium. So I think it's pretty groovy. What do you think? Uh, I second that and I'm really excited to roll up my sleeves and get into it. Finally, how about the noob category? Is it easy to build? <sighs> I gotta be honest, it is a challenge, but the thing is, if you're willing to, do, to put in the work, I think even a noob can handle it. But I do not want to understate the difficulty, so I'm going to give it a 7. I think it's not really noob friendly. We're no longer the noobs that we once were, but it was still kicking our asses. I think we could have waited with this for maybe another month or two, and then we would have been fine on our own. If you want to make this build easier on yourself, I recommend ordering some other surface mount projects and practicing with those first. You can also get surface mount practice kits, which are much cheaper than Eurorack modules. <laughs> um, learn from our mistakes with the fine pitch T-SOP ICs. Try a different method, try hand soldering them or try using hot air only for those. And finally, follow our calibration instructions. If you listen to the Synth DIY guy and if you listen to our videos, um, the calibration procedure will be very painless for you. My other advice? Do not use too much solder paste. This is really a case where less is more. I mean, it's gonna make it really difficult to not bridge components if you're using um, a ton of solder paste like I was originally. So with that, uh, we wanna wrap this up. This has been a really fun and great build. We wanna thank Tom for all the support throughout. We wanna thank Stein from This Is Not Rocket Science for helping us debug this project. We wanna thank you guys, all of our viewers. Keep subscribing. If you subscribe now and comment on this video or in the chat, you have a chance to win one of these partial kits and you get to build the MS-22 for yourself. So see you next time, guys. Thank you so much.